Perfect. So, uh, hi everyone. Today, I want to share to you a cool approach that could make your workday or your workflow more efficient. Uh, you know how annoying it is to switch between apps, just for example, a scheduling assistant. Uh, well, I found a way how to fix that, kind of. Uh, I took a feature from the Outlook app uh, called the scheduling assistant and brought it into Dynamic 365. Think of it like copying or moving your favorite game to a new console, the uh, same fun, different place, like the Xiaomi S 7 and the Porsche Taycan, you know. Uh, today, I'll show you how to utilize custom pages to make your work life smoother and get more done in less time or with less distraction. So, I'm Niels Gronstein, Senior Consultant at Podware. I'm delighted to have this opportunity to share my insights with you today. Uh, I'm always excited to engage in discussions, share ideas, uh, or simply connect with like-minded people or individuals like you are. So don't, hes don't hesitate to reach out. I'd be happy to connect with you. So you can find my credentials and everything over there. So let's move on because time is rare. And also, uh, this is it. So. We kick things off by diving into the introduction where we'll discuss the significance of optimizing workflows and explain why it is so important to outsource processes to a custom page. Uh, from there, we'll move on to explore the architecture behind the scheduling assistant, followed by a live demo showcasing its look and feel and its features. After that, we'll dive into the topic of caching the output from the custom page to access it in your model driven map. And if we have time for that, we'll wrap it up with the Q&A and otherwise, you know, please contact me via the socials because I want to give uh, some space for the other contributors today. So, as we increasingly rely on multitude of applications for specific tasks, the need to minimize the disruptions caused by app switching becomes ever more pressing. App switching fragments our focus, disrupts our flow, and imposes a significant, a significant cognitive burden on our mental resource. Studies show that it leads to substantial time wastage and compromises the quality of our work. However, by consolidating our tools and processes within Dynamic 365 using custom pages, we can mitigate these challenges. Custom pages offers a tailored experience reducing the need for an app switching and enabling us to maintain focus and productivity. So, uh, I have a little sentence in here which should uh, mean that imagine you're on a highway and you constantly need to switch lanes. Each switch requires a shoulder check to ensure the lane is clear, signaling your attention by using your blinker, possibly breaking to safely execute the change, and then accelerating to get back up to speed. This constant lane changing interrupts the flow of your drive and significantly slows you down. Similar, when you're constantly switching between applications, it's like navigating through different lanes of traffic. Each switch requires mental effort to adapt to the new application environment, avoid distractions, and focus on the new task. This constant switching disrupts our workflow and results in us spending much more time and energy than necessary to complete our tasks. So let's shift gears and investigate the architecture behind my solution. Just as a well-designed highway system can streamline traffic flow and minimize delays, a carefully crafted architecture can optimize our workflow. In my case, all begins with a model-driven app serving as our user interface. After that, the JavaScript invokes our custom page, which acts as the central hub for a scheduling assistant. This custom page, implemented on the Power Platform, has the capability to interact with multiple data sources, leveraging tools such as gateways, Power Automate, custom connectors, to seamlessly integrate with various systems and services. In my case, I'm using a custom connector to call the Graph API to get the calendar entries from specific users. Next, we implement caching mechanisms in our custom page to store data within our model-driven app. And lastly, we utilize JavaScript to read the cache data. And if you're interested in how I do this uh, in a kind of more detailed manner, I will write a blog entry about all this stuff today, and you will find it in my socials. So without further ado, a lot of speaking, let's go for a quick demo. So here we go in my Dynamic 365. Uh, it's just a quite a simple samples app where I have the appointments in there. And now when I click on appointment and I want to uh, start an appointment with my colleagues and the customer, for example, uh, the most annoying stuff uh, I have is uh, I have to come up with my colleagues and find a, a, a time frame which is suitable for both of us. So what I did is I've implemented a comment button which opens a custom page. And this custom page looks very similar to the one which you see 
when you go into the Outlook calendar, you click in to create a new appointment, navigate into the scheduling assistant, and you have it over here. So it was looking quite the same, but as you know, Microsoft is changing things, and so was the user interface. But it was quite the same a few months ago. Um, here you have the opportunity uh, to create a attendee for this appointment. For example, I want to add myself uh, for an appointment. It takes some time. It's just a demo and a proof of concept, which I've which I've done uh, in the past. But trust me, it works. And now I do the same for, let's say, I want to add Alan Steiner as a required attendee. And also an optional attendee will be added in a few seconds. It takes some time because in the background, it's retrieving all the data from the graph API uh, via the custom connector to show it in here in the user interface. And also, uh, Mr. Contoso. I know that uh, all of this data has been uh, retrieved and it's available in this uh, scheduling assistant. I'm able, when this disappears, to select, for example, a free time slot. Let's say uh, there it is, it's quite empty. I want to kick off an appointment. I can just click in here, say OK. It should take up to two hours, and then I'm fine. I also have the same functionalities like high times outside my meeting, and so if I look at scheduling data, it's implemented, but I won't show it today because it's uh, too much stuff going on. Now when I click on Save, this data has been written into a background table. It's the custom page helpers, which uh, serves as our caching mechanism or as a caching storage, um, where we put this data in. And as soon as we're closing the custom page, the JavaScript reads this kind of cache and writes the data right into this user interface without having to save. So this is uh, in the create state. It's not created in the back end yet, but it already has the data from the custom page in this app. So how is this being made? I could show to you a slide which says caching and show you all of those things uh, which was done in the back end. But I could also just go into the system and show it to you. So let's jump into the back end. So there's a little JavaScript uh, which is doing the magic. Um, basically, I'm creating two variables, like a custom page name and a session ID. Uh, don't get me wrong, I just made it for demo reasons. Uh, this is not the best way to create a session ID, but it's a way. So we kind of reuse the parameters entity name and record ID because these are the only two parameters available for custom pages. We are not allowed to do any custom parameters by now. So what I did is I just put my things which I needed into there like my attendees and custom page and session ID, uh, did like some delimiters to extract them in the, uh, uh, in the next step. And then I'll just pass this information into the Navigate 2 option for Microsoft, which is uh, quite easy to use. I just say Navigate 2. And when I do like this, uh, give me a second. This has been done. So it's calling the custom page and to read those to read this data I go in the invisible function of my screen and I just go okay read my record ID and part those values I need and store them as context variables in a, inside my uh, application so now the parameter are stored in my application I can reuse it uh, later for the caching mechanism also, uh, how to get the attendees, it's quite similar, parsing the entity name, and then you just do a little bit of stuff, which is uh, yeah, quite a lot. I won't show it yet. But uh, what I will show you is when you're doing that, you can quite, kind of configure your appointment where you can choose your attendees, optional, required. You can do like date things and kind of stuff. And when you click on save, it's just creating a record. You see there's a patch which patched the custom page helpers on the defaults, which says only create a new record. And then I like uh, create things like I insert the name, 
I insert the session ID and also all the JSON stuff I need for my client side script to set fields that I wanted to be set. So with this in mind, I can click on save and hopefully I could showcase it to you how it looks like in the system. So when I click on save, I will show it to you later. Uh, things are happening. The custom page helpers gets a new record. So this is the record which is deleted afterwards, but the Dbox one I for now static, so I can showcase it to you. It has the name, the session, and also all the stuff I need in JSON format. And after that, the script, when the page has been closed, goes and retrieves this specific record based on the custom page name and the session ID. For that record reasons, I delete it afterwards, and then I just uh, do things like parsing the JSON and setting values, so kind of stuff you as a dev should, should know. So basically, this is all it. If you want to have more details on that, as mentioned, I will write a decent blog entry about it. Also, I write uh, down about uh, how I did the app registration for the Graph API to get those uh, calendar entries, how I deal with private appointments and so on. This is in the making. It will take some time, but it will be a series about that. So if you have any questions, please contact me over my socials, LinkedIn, X, or via my blog. I'll be happy to connect with you, guys. Thank you. Thank you.